You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of February 10, 2019. This is episode 109. From that sleepy city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And dealing with a little bit of candle wax from birthday candles on my fingers, I'm Chris Powell. On this episode, AJ and I explore a topic that's both blah and yaw. It's shunned by society, yet necessary for the creative process. It's something we endured so much as youngsters, but never seemed to experience as grown-ups. Am I boring you yet? If so, good. We're going to be exploring the life-changing magic of boredom next on the Bellingham Podcast. Okay, I'm starting this one off. <laughs> <laughs> the birthday candles are for my podcast partner in crime, AJ Barce. Happy birthday, AJ. Thank you, sir. As we are recording, it is actually on the day. Yes, my day of. The day of, and I, I, it's safe to say that you are now officially entrenched in your 30s. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. So uh, anyway, uh, joyeux anniversaire. Ah, uh, merci we, beaucoup. We, uh, oui, oui. And uh, <laughs> anyway, let's get this party started. What are we going to start off with? Chris, I'm bored. Really? I, uh, you know, shucks, man. Like we've done 109 episodes. I'm really bored, man. Well, l- let's let's talk about boredom and how it can <laughs> help out in a little bit. But first, we've got some wonderful news from the Watch Fam. Yes. So, uh, okay. So we need to back up a little bit. A couple episodes. <laughs> Be kind. <laughs> rewind. There you go. So, oh gosh, probably ten or so episodes back, you had made a remark that you're a one watch guy. You're a unicorn in the watch fam. I have a Seiko SKX 007 modded by my <laughs> podcast partner in crime, AJ Barce. Right, right. And you have two straps that are both toxic NATOs, black and, and royal. Uh, the Admiralty Gray. The Admiralty which is Gray. Just gray yes, gray. but it is a royal type strap. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so, anyway, one of a uh, friend of the show and and listener EA8. Um, Hi, EA8. He, he, he hit me up on, on Instagram and he was just like, what? Chris only, <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm putting his inflection in there. So um, maybe he was just like, what? What is, what doth is this? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So anyway, he hit me up. He's like, you know, I'd like to send you guys something. What's your, what's your guys' wrist size? And then a couple weeks go by and I get this package in the mail and it is two custom made killer straps yes. made out of leather from EA8 Leather Goods. And you've got it on your black on black with a black ceramic bezel SKX Yes, with this awesome saddle stitch that just runs on the left and right hand side. I've got one on my custom, which EA8 I don't think knows about. That strap is on my vintage Seiko Navigator Timer, GMT, which is my one piece where it's like, it's, it's my, my, my trophy piece. It's just, I love that. It's not in the greatest condition, but I love that watch. And that's, that strap, it was almost as if he made it for it. It just looks killer. Yes. The attention to detail is amazing. You could, you could tell that this, this was a little bit of time spent on this. And if I may, yeah. uh, for EA8 out there, uh, thank you so much for uh, hooking AJ and me up with some fine quality straps. This is this is on my one and only right now, and I thoroughly enjoy the comfort and the feel of this. Plus, I got to say, you know, I'm, a, I'm still not really in the whole watch yes, know-it-all are. zone. But well, yes, you're, but you're, I'm a the, you're a watch But fan. I got to say, the logo that you have on the underside oh, of yeah. the strap, you have EA8 in an incredibly clever logo design. There's an E and a backward Z that kind of looks like an A, and then the way it's a vertical, you put them next to each other, it turns out to be an A. Eight. Very clever. Props to the ingenuity. Yeah. The strap feels great, and of course it's black because you know what my heart yearns for. <laughs> uh, and so thank you so much for this. Uh, go out and check out at EA8 on Instagram. So, Instagram and social media. And we got uh, a link to uh, EA Leather Goods uh, in the show notes. Drink. Drink. And so, uh, yes, great yeah. quality stuff. Love my Toxic Nados. Terry's the goods. Totally. I have a third to be able to have a little bit of a repertoire <laughs> yeah. with my one and only watch. So thank you so much. Yeah, no, it, it totally, because I mean, you and I typically wear Natos and th- this strap just dresses up just about any watch it touches. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So anyway, uh, very cool. Yeah. he's a, uh, So I just wanted to, he doesn't know that we're doing this, but I wanted to throw out um, 
pulling from his social media. He says, quote, I'm a one man shop making bespoke leather goods, mostly watch straps. If you see something you like or you have an idea, hit me up at yay eight. And, and we be speaking about his bespoke yeah. uh, goods right there. Yeah, no, it's sure. yeah, no, it's totally. And he is the goods. Yes. This is a fun fact about this guy. Uh, if you're interested in leather craft, here's the thing. We always talk about uh, companies and entities and entrepreneurs that do really cool and open things. He is hyper open because you can literally on Instagram, on his stories, he actually posts videos of when he's doing his leather craft. It's almost like Bob Ross, but for leather work, like happy trees, happy stitches, you know, like you get to watch the maestro doing, create yeah. your product. It's really cool. While you wait, yeah. or so to speak. Yeah, no, yeah. that's really cool. That's it a nice is. touch. Too. Yeah. So that's the only other thing I want to throw out. All right. So. Now let's get back to the topic at hand, if you will, AJ. Totes. On on your birthday, yeah, uh, which is not a, a, a really a topic of discussion, but when we were talking about the last uh, episode, 108, and how we were investing in ourselves, I gave a little bit of a Easter egg, uh, stay tuned hint that the we don't get bored. It's not no. it's not culturally acceptable to be bored anymore in this world. Or when you're a kid, you're told don't be bo- what do you mean you're bored? Go out and rah, 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 rah. Yeah, yeah, fill in the blank. Yeah. And and now we have these screens and devices that completely eliminate any opportunity for us to be bored. Yeah. And it's a concerted effort to get to a place where we are um actually not engaging our brains in something no. and that's kind of what i wanted i kind of you know was holding a gun to your head and saying yeah. dude we're going to talk about this <laughs> no yeah you were really yeah you were very threatening and menacing i was on board uh, well <laughs> i was kind of <laughs> like hey man what do you say we talk about this and you're like cool all right <laughs> so let's let's go back to the way back machine right. so in the 80s for me and the 90s for you since we're a decade apart yeah. now yeah um how did you handle being bored as a kid. Oh my gosh, I'm so bored. Oh my gosh, I'm so bored. Life is so boring. What'd you do when you were a kid to uh, to deal with boredom? So I grew up in a very small town, much like yourself. Like John Cougar Mellencamp too. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, and we were actually, I guess, opposing opposing peninsulas, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. I was on the Olympic Peninsula. I was in Sequin. Kitsap. Yeah. yeah. And you were on Kitsap. Seabeck. Yep. And uh, so basically in my town, you basically had like three options. Okay. You had fishing. Uh, because literally you're right there on Puget Sound. Uh, you hike the mountains, which is probably why I have an affinity for get out. The the Olympic mountains in this case. Well, it'd be Green Mountain in green this case. Mountain. Yes, green right, Mountain. Yes, Green Mountain. Yes. And uh, a, a lot of communities when I grew up out there uh, were a bunch of horsers. So you always had horseback. You were always going up to horse camp or just, you know, tooling about. And uh, there's always a secret fourth uh, hidden menu option, secret menu option. <laughs> As I alluded so, to last episode. Well, so, okay. And I've mentioned this on the show before. Like my, my pops growing up, like he's a, uh, and I even mentioned this on Wacom Workflow back in yes, the day. Yes, yes. Um, you know, master builder basically can build anything. And so thus I was taught I could build anything, right? You see something you like, cool. Don't go buy it. Go build it. And so I dare not say I was bored. Why? Because my pops would be like, oh, you're bored? Cool. Today, you're mine. Here's a hammer. We're going to go build a shed. So for me, it was basically get out, get out, or get out. Because also, this was still the era where I didn't have really a screen in the house. You know, I had maybe the TV. Yeah. I don't know, like fishing, like it's one of those things where you're literally sitting and holding a pole. That's all you're doing. But my brain was elsewhere. Mm. Like... I'm thinking about the wind. I'm thinking about maybe a girl that's on my mind because I was a high school or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And, or I'm just daydreaming about, Hey, how could I do X, Y, Z? And Oh, if I mention it to dad, I'm going to be building it. Right. So like my brain's always being working, even though I'm not really quote doing much. I was bored. Um, same thing with hiking, like to go to point A to point B. I mean, you have the effort of actually, you know, walking, um, or, you know, climbing or whatever, but really, like, you're either engaged in what you're doing or I, I was one of those kids that my mind wandered, man. I'd look outside the window and dream about Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, man. Like, that, that's where I would go. Oh, your brain was your own, hey, Google. Pretty much. My brain was my own, hey, Google. Yes. So, I mean, that, that's me. In a nutshell. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty boring in my background. Like, <laughs> I just, I was just one of those kids that just like being outside and just doing whatever. The only other time that I would, quote, be bored is I'd video game. Yeah. You know, because if I couldn't, you know, it's it's what, 38 degrees outside right now, Chris? Sure. It's a heat wave compared to our dear friends Valid. in the Midwest Minas- and yeah. East Coast. Hey, we if you're listening to us in the stay Midwest and the East Coast, and stay inside. we're thinking of you uh, and hang in there. It, yeah, it's bonkers it's over there. It's brutal, but anyway. But anyway, uh, I mean, I was always a daydreamer. 
And if I wasn't daydreaming, video games was my way to augment my visually uh, what I would daydream. So, yeah. I mean, what about you, Chris? So I, I'm a decade before you in the mid 80s when I was, you know, in, in a young chap, if you will. I grew up you know, uh, with a couple of parents that were uh, more older than uh, the typical parents. And I had an acre of land about a mile or two outside of town. Uh, and so my my buddies were at least a multiple mile bike ride away. Oh, you mean a country block away. I had the sure. same thing. Sounds good. So, and I, and I grew up being kind of a loner. I was an only child. And when I got home from the bus that you, and my parents were, you know, both working. So I was a bit of a latchkey kid that oh, was, yeah. that, that had was... a negative connotation back in the eighties. But I, I got home and, you know, I had my snack and I watched a good amount of television in mm-hmm. the, in the teams that, uh, Hey kids, back when I was a kid, it was ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS and this young upstart network called Fox. Oh, that yeah. That was it, other than some local channels and stuff before cable came around. <laughs> so I did a lot of TV, and hence what has propagated from that is all of these wacky references that I tend to have yeah. for music, movies, TV, and such, because it's all jammed in my brain as opposed to remembering all the stuff I should have learned in school. That was the biggest way that I combated boredom. I watched a whole lot of syndicated reruns of, of shows. I also, my parents were garage sales. And they would go uh, around Sequim, uh, if you weren't from there, and go to a whole lot of garage sales around town. And they would accumulate a lot of Legos because eventually people would just sell a, a pile of Legos. And I had a big old... Smith Corona briefcase. It's a t- yeah. It's it's it's. I think it said Smith. It was a big old typewriter, but it was a big old suitcase. Yeah, yeah. Type full of Legos, and I would build spaceships because I really liked the the space cartoons. Yeah. Uh, uh, Star Blazers, Battle of the Planets, or G Force. All these things, and I created my own little spaceship, and I'm in my room. It was great uh, as I'm by myself. I read a lot of sports magazines, and I had a you know Baseball Digest, Football Digest, Sports Illustrated. A lot of stuff. I I was able. I was really into the batting averages, the slugging percentages, mm-hmm. and the ERA of uh, baseball players like Seattle Mariners and things because I collected baseball cards. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, and and basketball and football, and so I did a lot of that. Plus, speaking of cards. How does one combat boredom when you are in your room and you've already read the magazine twice? You go to your baseball cards and you organize them by year numerically. Ah, the minimalist seed had been planted. Yes. And so I was able to uh, lock in as I'm flipping through cards rather rapidly, the hundreds, the tens, and the ones section to be able to get them all in numerical order. It was I was actually a fairly smart kid back in the day, uh, <laughs> or resourceful You still at least. are a pretty smart kid, yeah, Chris. Well, you know, that, you know the age kind of goes, what, what, did, what did I have for lunch yesterday? Uh, anyway, <laughs> and then in high school, you know, at, let me back up. In middle school, uh, I wanted to play drums, but of course my parents said, no way. Yeah. Because that'd be way too loud. I didn't have the armature for playing the trumpet. Mm. Armature warriors where you purse your lips. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, the mouthpiece for a trombone was uh, big enough so that the armature muscular strength of my pursed lips, yeah. I'd be able to play that and not have it sound like a dead cat. Uh-huh. So from fifth through 10th grade, a lot of the boredom that I might occur was practicing my trombone for the band class. Funny thing happened around the junior year of, of high school when I turned 16, grew about two inches, gained about 10 pounds and uh, stopped cracking my voice and actually got a little bit of a lower voice, somewhat of what you're hearing right now. Uh, I realized I had this revelation as I'm at the dinner table that I cannot meet girls at parties playing a trombone. Really? Therefore, uh, <laughs> the parties that I want to go to, <laughs> okay, no. Okay, I was going to say it. <laughs> So anyway, I asked my parents after watching a lot of MTV and a lot of a lot of MTV back when they played music videos and you didn't know what video was coming up. And probably there wasn't any commercials. Uh, there were commercials, oh, there were? but that's okay. I, I went to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I asked my parents at the dinner table one uh, evening during my junior year, Mom and Dad, I'd really like to learn how to play the electric guitar. Can you buy me a, a, a electric guitar and an amplifier? And, the, and they you know, thought about it, and uh, we went to the music shop in Port Angeles, the big oh, yeah. city in the small town of Squim back in the day. Got me a, a entry-level guitar and a small amplifier. What was it, a little Fender Scratch? It was a PV Tracer. Thank oh, you very much. Oh, okay. It was a color of blue that you do not find yep, yep. in in the natural world. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so that was a you take you take nineteen uh, sixties Robin's egg blue and then crank it up by nineties. Yeah, 
Yeah. So anyway, it's 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 uh, it's actually one of the colors of blue on some of the uh, mobile phones we have nowadays. Yeah, yeah, no. But anyway, blue. and I had a ten watt Fender amp, and yeah, yeah. I figured I didn't have lessons. I learned on my own. But that boredom got channeled into doing uh, creating something, and yeah. I was able to create hard rock eighties music <laughs> that I'm playing along with with my boombox in my right ear and the amplifier in my left ear on my bed in my bedroom. Because oh by the way, those parties that I was hoping to go to to meet girls playing electric guitar, I didn't go to any of those parties in right, high school. Right, right. I wasn't cool enough. So yeah. that's what I did to combat boredom growing up. It was pretty much creating spaceships out of Legos, consuming content like magazines, um, organizing my sports cards, productivity, yeah, and b- learning electric guitar as creating more content or uh, yeah. a hobby. So. Hey, my how things haven't changed in some ways, or they just, you know, but as you were, as, as you're listening in and you're thinking, yeah, I never get bored. I mean, there's, there's just not enough time. There's so much to do. There's so many, there's so many people to, to take advantage of. Uh, how are you able to find that way to experience boredom, to take that experiment? Try a minute, try five minutes, 30 minutes. Let's go from there. AJ, where would you go to be bored around Bellingham and Whatcom County? Well, I'm never bored if I'm listening to KMRE 102.3 FM. Low, low, low birthday power. <laughs> Community birthday radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. Uh, nice tie-in, by the way. I tr- I, you know, I was just... You just, you just slip I, that I in keep, every episode. I do, because I have to keep track, yeah? Yes. Okay, so no no big shock. Because of my background, I tend to, I tend to get the most f- bored, and I mean that in the most freedom way, being out on our trails. So mm. in Bellingham... Whatcom Falls, the whole trail system in the Whatcom Falls area, uh, which ties into the Whatcom Creek Shale system south and the North Ridge, which is north of the falls. I, matter of fact, so when you first proposed this episode, I did a little test. Uh, I walked from our office practically all the way home. Okay. And basically took the first trailhead that I could to see if I could stay away from pavement. I had to cross a couple of roads okay. because it, you know, the, you know how our trail system, like there's a road that goes yes, between. Yes, yes. No, I'm familiar with it. But basically I made it just, uh, just about home. It took me about five miles, huh. uh, hiking all the way home. I was huffing it because, uh, the sun sets a lot sooner and I got off of work late that day. Yes. When it got dark, dark, I didn't have a headlamp or anything. Uh-huh. So my wife ended up picking me up literally a mile away from the mm. house. So that's a, yeah, I didn't know about that. That's an I, interesting experiment. And so in doing it, I was thinking to myself, one, what do I think about when I do this? So the first part of this hike now, bear in mind, folks, I was basically hoofing it for a little about five, five and a half miles. The first half of it, I did not listen to podcasts, music or anything. I was just out and about kind of like when I was a kid. Ears open. Ears open. And after that, I found myself going, you know. I'm a lot farther away from the house than I thought. And <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> and so part of me was just like, well, I will listen, start listening to some podcasts and stuff. And so I did, but nevertheless, I'm still, it's interesting. My, my boredom isn't, uh, cause I'm, I'm doing something. I'm, I'm hiking, you know, very mildly I'm hiking. So I'm getting activity. Uh, I've got an elevated heart rate, which is always good. And I'm also still consuming media. And I'm also thinking like I'm, I'm doing three things at once. I'm multitasking. It's funny because in doing that, I'm not bored. Like, but in that, the moment of when someone would be bored, when you're driving or when you're walking, instead of looking, having my nose in my screen and having that neck crank that I think in 10 years is going to be like a, a carpal tunnel syndrome mm, for people's necks. Maybe I'm looking around, I'm seeing, you know, the squirrel that clearly got nipped by a cat because the tip of the tail has gone while I'm listening to this um, Scottish guy. I'll have to tell you about this podcast, Scottish guy doing like this series about um, the Apollo 13 mission. Okay. And so I'm learning as I'm doing it, but I had about an hour, hour and a half to myself, you know, no phone calls, no texts, no, and just, just walking, just walking home. Excellent. So Whatcom Falls uh, area. I love that. Big Rock Garden. Yes. Which is another cool place off Alabama Hill here in Bellingham. And it's great. There's a whole bunch of local sculptures in there and it's like a super quiet zone. Somewhat near uh, Bloedel Donovan Park. Somewhat near. It's, it's, a hike. It, yes, it's a hike. <laughs> uh, there's a trail system that connects the two. There you go. But um, that's a cool place, especially if you want to just sit and, and look at art. There's also a really cool uh, Japanese inspired pagoda there um, that you can have sit and have lunch, which is nice. Typically, m- most of what I do is get out and usually when i'm out i usually have a camera in hand so uh lately i've been kind of expanding on potentially what would be something i would hook into the analog explorer picked up a 1981 canon ae1 program which is another film camera and uh i you know I, i shot a couple of shots on film as i was you know listening to podcasts walking and 
just, just allowing myself to just not have to worry about email or text or I'm basically running on nature's time, not the nine to five clock. Would it give yourself a gift? Yeah. So that was my experience, uh, my experiment leading into the show. So, yeah. Uh, what about you, Chris? Where do you, where do you go? What do you do when you're, when you're, you know, bored? I usually visit every store in the wing of JCPenney at Bella's Fair. I thought I've seen you no, there. No, actually I don't. Uh, no, uh, there's, there's a couple places actually. Um, it's, it's really easy to be drawn into your screen indoors and especially in this type of season, in this time of season. But I really have, uh, last summer I stumbled upon something that was a beautiful experience where I'm able to uh, start at the Chrysalis, park, at, park by the Chrysalis in Bellingham, kind of yeah. halfway between uh, town, Fairhaven, uh, town Fairhaven, town Bellingham. And I go down the Taylor Dock yeah. and do the Taylor Dock walk from the Chrysalis to uh, the Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And I had a time where it was like a, a six minute walk and I'm right there on the water. It's beautiful. I look around. I see the beautiful uh, homes overlooking the bay. Uh, it was great. I, and then along the theme of water, being near water, I go to the Tom Glenn Common uh, at the Bellwether, which is uh, that open area with those chairs that are impossible to move. Yes. <laughs> you have to be Hulk or Thor to be able to move those things. I moved a couple of them sometime, but I was usually angry when I was doing it. <laughs> but anyway, Tom Glenn Common, kind of in that open area around the Bellwether, and uh, the Fairhaven Village Green Benches. Now the benches, yeah, you know, by Village Books. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 down, down below, right, yes. right, right. So on the other side of the Boulevard Trail, by Village Books, not on the green because you know, are you sure? I don't, I'm not much for picnic blankets. Mm. I like sitting where my my gluteus maximus could be seated on a bench and I got a backrest. Yeah, and there's just something about letting your mind wander at that beautiful mural. Uh, that is uh, where they show the screens of the Fairhaven Outdoor Cinema. Yeah. Uh, and just kill 15, 20 minutes if I'm on a break or if I got some time or, you know, or something. Those are the three areas around town where I guess we're similar as far as being outside. Out. Yeah. As opposed to interior or retail well, yeah. uh, <laughs> for boredom. And I'm glad to hear that both of us aren't into the retail therapy. When I'm bored, I go shopping. No. Now, if you are uh, one who ascribes to that, that's all good. Sure. That if that's if that feeds you, okay. Shop responsibly. There is please shop responsibly. Yes. And uh, but for where we're at, we we got to engage in the beauty that is this area, which is cool. So here's a challenge for everyone. In addition to wishing AJ a happy birthday on hashtag Beham Podcast on Instagram, uh, you you know, I, and if you don't wish him a happy birthday, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. Uh, <laughs> ex- ask yourself what it would be like to be bored, or how could you find yourself. What would it take for you to be bored? No TV, no no movies, no screens, no uh, Apple Watch, whatever you got. Yeah. Uh, how would that? How would you set that up for yourself, and then give that a try on some a time you have off from work? Well, would I? I would even ratchet that up one level more, and that's the reason why I did that walk. Is the first part of that walk, I intentionally didn't have anything on, no no audio, no nothing. Like I was just out and about. What is? Find out what is your habits when you get that creeping feeling of boredom. Yes. So like, for instance, like you just said, the screen has kind of killed boredom. Like when you feel, when you're at board or when you're winding down at, at home before you go to bed, do you reach for your phone and scroll through Instagram or before you, like before you get off of work and you know, you got a couple of minutes, but you still have to be in the office before you go grab your keys and head to your, your um, car. Do you set up those podcasts and scroll through Pinterest first? What are your habits? Be aware of them. And that's the, that, you know, that way you can, I'm not saying don't listen to podcasts, but allow yourself to realize maybe you have bad habits. And you're killing boredom by doing it. This message has been brought to you by Captain Mindful, AJ Barce. <laughs> Captain Mindful? <laughs> well, this is a great, you, you totally nailed mindfulness on the head. Oh, okay. That's exactly, notice what you're, what you're doing, yeah. experience what you're experiencing, take note of it. Yeah. And then just uh, allow it to be, or say, do, is this something that I you want to do? Yeah, yeah that's exactly. It. So, and if you're interested in something like this for um, trying out being boredom, there might be a bit of a side effect that you might enjoy. Side effects might include more creativity, positivity, and uh, awareness of your surroundings. Exactly. And so we got a couple uh, links to books and articles uh, in our show notes. Drink. Drink. Um, there's a fine journalist, online journalist, podcaster extraordinaire. Her name's Manoush Zamarodi. And Manoush, I still want to be a guest on your show. <laughs> uh, the invitation will 
anytime, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Manisha the goods. Uh, she wrote a book called Bored and Brilliant in which uh, through her podcast and her note to self podcast, which has since been moved on to uh, bigger and better things, uh, there were a whole lot of people that chimed in about their habits online, et cetera, et cetera. And she wrote a book about being bored. And that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Um, there's an author named Mark Hawkins that has a, a Kindle book from what I saw. It could be in paperback, depending. Uh, the, the Power of Boredom. And that really is where he is making the case how it turbocharges your creativity, as you said. When your mind is allowed to not be fully focused on something, whether it's liking that picture of your cute little niece on, on that feed that we're not going to talk about, or you're not watching the latest episode of fill in the blank show on fill in the blank streaming service, things kind of pop up in your head that might be actually helpful, something to pursue. And then a couple articles from fast company and wired about the same, uh, concept. So I would say, uh, you know, if you're bored, check these <laughs> resources out online. Yeah. So I, I think what we can kind of surmise, or at least I want to kind of surmise is, Chris, is there a difference between killing time and being bored? Well, uh, I would say being bored is something that you don't have anything that you have to do mm -hmm. or nothing that you, uh, or you're procrastinating, right. you know, for something. Killing time is you're, you have something you have to do, but there's a certain time frame where you're not able to do it yet. Right. And so I think one involves an agenda and one doesn't have an agenda. Okay. Or, or, or something uh, that's beckoning, beckoning your time. I find it funny that in, in, in our English language, we have two different phrases that tend to be synonymous, but kind of aren't if you really think about it. Because I think you're right. Like, well, if you're point A to point B and you have like five minutes in between, well, you can't really get bored, I guess, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it out to the listeners. BM pod, uh, hashtag BM podcast. Like, is there, do you guys feel like there's a difference between killing time and being bored? Well, when you, when you have a, a day full of meetings or a day full of uh, answering emails or filling out help desk tickets, yeah. one right after the other, and you've got a break that you're forced to take for lunch, right. you're killing time between the next thing on your agenda or on your, on your calendar item, mm -hmm. event list. But when you're bored, that, that means like I got an afternoon that I don't have anything set up. Right. And... I don't have to do the dishes. I don't have to go anywhere or I'm not obligated to be uh, doing anything for anyone. What do I do? So one might say somebody might be able to plan boredom. Oh, that would be a great idea and a great topic as well. How would one plan boredom? Yeah. I think we were kind of a couple th ideas. Thought, thought exercise. Anyway, uh, on that note, that bored note, that wraps up for this edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again for being bored and listening to us wherever you like to get your podcast, whether that's on a line or over the air on Camry 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the subdued or maybe bored city of subdued excitement. On that note, I'm AJ Barsay. And I'm Chris Powell. Thank you once again for joining us on the Bellingham Podcast. Have you, blown, have you blown out the candles yet? I have blown out the candles. Excellent. Now let's dive into some cake. <laughs>